Here we go, taking a look at uh, thermal chemistry, chapter 11.2. Uh, one of the introductory topics here is we start taking a look at calculating energy changes in chemical reactions. So one of the first things we have to take a look at here is looking at how we can uh, define uh, what heat and thermal energy and temperature and all these various things might be. And so when we first take a look at what thermal energy is, we talk about this with respect to kinetic molecular theory and particle motion. All right, and so when we take a look at the particles that are moving, and we know that particles in cold situations move slowly, particles in warmer situations uh, move a little bit more quickly. So this is a measure going back to science 10 where we're talking about kinetic energy. And so if we were able to take a look at every single particle, be it atom or molecule or what have you, uh, in a sample and measure its speed, we could figure out its total kinetic energy. So thermal energy is the sum total of all the particle motion that you have in a sample. In other words, impossible to do, so just know it by definition. What we're going to do is take a look at the use of temperature. Now it's important to realize that temperature is not hot, it is not cold, and it is not heat. Okay, temperature is just the scale by which we measure the average kinetic energy in a sample. So imagine all of the gas particles in your classroom. You could not uh, measure each and every molecule's motion to calculate its speed, determine its mass and all that to figure out the total kinetic energy. So what we'll do is we'll simplify things and we'll just take a temperature in the room. Now we know realistically in a lot of different classrooms, there's hot areas, there's cold areas, the temperature is not consistent across the room, but we're going to pretend that it is. All right, so if I get just one average temperature within the room, then I can extend that to an average amount of kinetic energy for all of the particles that we would have in that sample. And we'll just pretend that every single gas particle in the room is moving at that exact same speed. Okay, so temperature is how we will come up with the measurements of kinetic energy and thermal energy uh, for our samples, in our labs, and in our practice questions. So again, as we talked about this, when we take a look at the relative temperature that we have for a sample, it relates to the particle motion. So when we take a look at chocolate milk, it's fresh out of the fridge, all right, it has a very low temperature, and therefore we assume that we have low average kinetic energy for all the chocolate milk particles in that glass. Fire it in the microwave for a little while to turn it into hot chocolate, and now you have high temperature particles having a much higher average kinetic energy and they are moving around much more quickly and we see that by the little motion trails behind our hot chocolate particles versus the cold chocolate particles. Okay, so that's a simple thing. We already uh, know that from Science 10. When we relate this to Chemistry 30, what we're going to concern ourselves with is this transfer all right, of thermal energy. That's the really important part, and this is what we define as heat, okay? Um, totals are hard to do when we start taking a look at uh, some of our uh, chemical calculations here. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll deal with the change, all right? And we did this back in Science 10 Physics when we were taking a look at those roller coaster problems and things like that, and we looked at the work done, so not how much total energy did the roller coaster have, but what it changed, uh, or how much it changed by as it went from, let's say, point A to point B to point C, if you remember that style of question. Okay, so we are very, very concerned with change. We have that little delta symbol here, which is the symbol for a change in a property, and so heat is the change in kinetic energy. This is sometimes called Q, which we saw in the climate unit of Science 10. So take a look at this uh, particle collision here. You have a high energy particle before this collision. As it uh, interacts with this, the particles on the other substance here, we find that it has lost energy and is now moving slowly. So where did that energy go? Because we had a change in kinetic energy here, which of course was a decrease in that energy. If you take a look at the particles on the other substance here, the low energy particle hits the surface or hits this particle over here and comes out with a higher kinetic energy or a higher speed. In other words, we would see things going from 
a low temperature to a warmer temperature and a warmer temperature to a lower on this side. And our particle over here has increased its kinetic energy. So what we have here is a thermal energy transfer known as heat, given as the symbol Q. All right, what we define then is that heat always transfers from the particles moving faster to the particles moving more slowly, or as you may have heard in previous courses, from hot to cold. All right, we could do something simple. We could take our hand, put it on the cold desk. It feels cold to me because I am losing kinetic energy from the particles that are in my hand to the colder particles that are in the desk. Eventually, we will come to some sort of equilibrium, and my hand and the desk where I'm touching it will equalize in temperature and have equal kinetic energies for the particles. But right now, I can feel the heat being lost from my hand, a cold feeling to me, all right, and the desk is warming up, picking up some of that energy. So energy, again, is conserved in all systems, all right, but we look at this transfer of energy. And so if I pick that up, of course, you can see where my hand was. If I was to touch it with my other hand, I can feel the warm and cold parts here as thermal energy was transferred from my hand to the desk. So heat, that's the transfer of energy or that change that we see here. I really wish the Q had a delta that went with it, but it doesn't. All right, so uh, just be mindful of that one. This refers to that change in kinetic energy, and we find it is very proportional to changes in temperature that we are able to measure. So the energy, hard to measure. The temperature, easy to measure. And so you might remember this formula from the climate unit. Q is equal to mc delta T. And m in this case is the mass, or the amount of material that's heating up or cooling down. Delta T is obviously that change in temperature. And remember, delta is just always equal to a final value minus an initial value. All right, so if we do it in that order, we'll always get the right positive or negative integer, and we will have the difference between uh, your starting and finishing temperatures. And then the last thing we have here is C, which is your specific heat capacity. This uh, talks about the specific material's ability to heat up or cool down, and every single substance uh, on the planet or in the universe has its own unique rate of heating up, holding heat, or holding this uh, thermal energy, and giving it back. So we look at this as heating up or cooling down, and its ability to hold onto uh, the thermal energy that you give it or take away from it. So specific heat capacities have a couple of different units. Be very mindful of this one on your data sheet. It is often given as joules of kinetic energy or energy per gram of substance per degree uh, C change. Water, you'll notice, is very, very high. Okay, but our metals, like lead and copper, are very, very low. This is why your cookware and things like that, your steel, all right, will heat up very, very fast. But the water that is in that pot seems to take forever to boil because it takes so much more energy to heat up one gram of water by a degree C versus, let's say, one gram of silver by a degree C. If we multiply the amount of energy by 1,000 to go to kilojoules, but take a look at our mass in kilograms, the kilo would cancel, all right, and you end up with the same unit. So these two units will have the same numbers, but you might wish to use one over another for various calculations based upon uh, what units or what values you have. Okay, so that's the theory behind this. I would normally use factor label method and I will show you the factor label method for a lot of our solutions here because it just works better for chemistry and for our uh, stoichiometric calculations. But this formula I find is really, really well entrenched and ingrained in our grade 10 minds and it's hard to train you guys away from it. So. Uh, this will be one of the few formulas that we will use in Chemistry 30. Most everything will be done through the factor label method. I'll show you both. Pick your poison and just be consistent going forward. Okay, so most of us, as we go through this uh, thermal unit, when we're asked to calculate an energy from uh, a substance heating up or cooling down, we'll use this MC delta T. Just make sure that that's clearly communicated. And you'll see that in the examples uh, in the next video as we uh, continue through the notes here. All right, see you in the next video.